This tutorial is about curtain walls, and in particular, how certain curtain walls work or don't work in Revit. And ultimately, I'm going to get to the use of adaptive components to build curtain walls. So what I'm going to do is, and here I'm in the project environment, and I've got a mass as an underlay. I'm going to go into my architecture tab, and I'm going to pick wall. And I'm going to pick uh, wall architectural. And I uh, set curtain wall 5 by 10. If I just drag a line, on my ground plane, I get you know a plain Jane curtain wall. It's composed of off-the-shelf curtain panels, and there's no mullions extruded. Um, I can do the same thing if I go to the Architecture tab, and I say Wall by Face, and I select a face. You'll see that the grid, the same five by ten grid, arrayed across the face of this mass. Now, if I do the same thing again, Wall by Face, and I try to do it on a sloped wall. You're going to see an error message where it says delete element. It can't do this. It's incompatible with a sloped face. So that's a little bit of a problem. And you just delete element to get out of that. Um, I can do it with a curtain system that's fundamentally built the same as this one. I've got a preset one that's 5 by 10. If I pick this and click create system, you'll see it gives me um, a curtain system that looks just like the curtain wall. Now I could sort of, I could. Uh, embellish these with mullions extruded along these lines and with uh, glass panels in between, I kind of myself prefer to do things the same way that curtain walls are constructed and that is create panels with the panel family and then insert them into this into this system. So I'm going to go to a panel family that I've already made I'm looking at it from the back now. So if I spin around to the front, you can see I went a little bit hog wild and I actually created a half extrusion because this is just going to be along the center line of a mullion. And I created a, a glass, a glazing pocket for this and also for the for the horizontal extrusions. So I'm going to load that into the project. Then I'm going to pick this curtain wall. I'm going to edit the type. So if I edit the type, as opposed to putting mullions on, uh, on each of the mullion lines, I'm just going to lay in a curtain panel. So I'll come down and find my panel. It's Rob's curtain panel. Click Apply. And now it's giving me a message. Loaded family curtain panels cannot be used in non-rectangular cells of the curtain host. So I'll just say OK, and I'll zoom in and show you what that means. We're pretty much OK here hit my space bar to flip that around. We're looking at the front of it now. You'll see that's my half mullion sort of forming a full mullion. It's got a bunch of detail and you can go crazy and put a lot of detail in it. However, they kind of fall apart when you do non-orthogonal, non-rectangular panels. So, well, what do we do about that? Oh, by the way, I can also do that with a curtain system. If I grab this guy and hit edit type, curtain panel, drops curtain panel, OK it's hunky-dory, except if I do a triangular or a trapezoidal panel, it's not going to like it. So one of the solutions that we may have is to use adaptive panels in order to do a similar thing to what a curtain wall panel will do. So I'm going to erase this curtain wall, face-based curtain wall, and my face-based curtain system. Instead I'm going to go in I'm going to edit my mass. Now any face that I grab I can actually grid out. If I say divide surface you'll see that I've divided the surface with UV grids. And I can keep those divided by a number or I can do a distance. So in this case let's do 5 feet and a distance 10 feet. Up oh, 1 feet. 10 feet. There we go. That's actually the opposite of what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go 5 feet, 10 feet. Okay, so I've got kind of the same thing that I had before, and I can even do the same thing here. It's a little bit unpredictable which axis they're going to use, but... Now we got UV grids, and those are generated from an origin. If I grab the panelized face and 
you see how it says layout fixed distance by center. I can change that to beginning. And you see that the uh, the U grid now generates from the bottom. And if I do the same thing for the V grid, it's generating from this corner, from the left hand side. And well, how is that helpful? Well, I can grab any of these guys. No, oh, by the way, the UV grids are not the only way to subdivide these. I could also use an intersects list, meaning I can have a series of levels. And if I pick them, if I go to intersects list, this file only has two levels. I could pick those and use those to start creating grids. Or I can create reference planes with names. And those reference planes will subdivide the grid. So if I grab my grid and I go to surface representation, I'm going to click nodes and click OK. So now I've got nodes at the intersection of the grids and this is going to give me something for my adaptive panel to latch onto. I just noticed I keep calling this an adaptive panel but that's not exactly the truth. What I'm really going to do is make an adaptive component. That's the, the nomenclature. So I'll go to new family and I'll come down to generic model adaptive. Okay, so this looks a lot like the um, the uh, conceptual mass environment, and it really is pretty much the same thing. If I come down here and I use the point tool, I can click one, two, three, four, and then if I select these points, I can click make adaptive. So now these points are, they're numbered, and they'll, they will drop into my model when I place this family one at a time in the order of these numbers. And I'm going to kind of create the same kind of curtain panel that I had in my normal curtain panel family. So just by selecting two of these points, I'm going to do a spline through points, change it to a reference line. I'm going to do that through each pair of these. And the reason why I'm changing it to a reference line is that when I make geometry out of these guys, I don't want them to dissolve and disappear. Okay, so now I've got these points. Well, I know a lot of people have tried to draw reference line extrusion guides uh, within the adaptive family. You can end up with quite a few lines and it can be quite messy, so there's another way of do this, to do this, and I want to show you how. I'm going to go to a file called Rob's Extrusion, which I've opened up. This is actually a face-based family. And you can find that uh, new family generic model face-based. This is when you, want, when you want to stick something to something else. It's actually quite a useful family. And I believe we could also use the um, another adaptive component family and nest it within it. I actually haven't tried that, but I have done this one. So suppose I want to draw the mullion of my, that I had in my other normal curtain panel family. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try an, an experiment here and go to Rob's curtain panel just for fun to see if it works. Edit extrusion, come down here, and copy to clipboard. Oops, not that one. Uh -huh. This is my face base family. And I'm going to try and paste it in here. Oh, yeah, cool. It's letting me. Okay, that's kind of cool. So I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to move him here to start with. And this can also be the nice thing about this is, it's once we pump it into the adaptive component, it's pretty fixed geometry that you could also parameterize. I can put dimensions uh, on all of these lines. So let me load this into the project. And, gosh, which one was it? Yeah, here we go, family one. Okay, so it's kind of asking me where do I want to put it. I'll place it on a work plane. And I'll pick a plane, say this one. And I'll put it, well, I'm going to put it out here for, for starters. And then I'll see if I can move it to there. Okay. And if I grab this guy and say show host, hopefully it'll be that. Yeah, it's it's on that plane of point number four. So it's not exactly the rotation I was looking for, but that's okay because I can grab this guy and rotate him 90 degrees. 
So now I'm going to place one on the other side. And this is already loaded, so if I go to Create Component, it sort of knows what I want to do. And I'll place on Work Plane, pick this guy, and I'll lay him into space there. Maybe I'll rotate him 90 degrees. Yeah. Let's see, these guys are actually oriented a little bit backwards, but I just want to get to the fundamental idea of this thing. I'm going to do a big crossing window since this stuff is all tiny and filter out everything except those two generic models that I just loaded. So I'll pick those two guys and I'll hit Create Form. Now if I come down close to that, you see it's actually created an extrusion along that line. And no matter where I drag these points, it's always going to be following that line. Now if I load this adaptive family into my project, you see now it's kind of doing crazy things. If I come in and I do one, two, sometimes you have to uh, tab around to try and find your, your points. Okay, one, two, three, four, and we're just seeing that side extrusion. Everything else is hidden. But let's go back into that, to that family and do it again. Create component. I'm going to place on work plane. Pick. Could have saved myself a little bit of trouble probably by going back and just rotating this extrusion in the generic model. Actually, wonder if this is mirrorable. Let's see. Wow, it worked. Okay, how about that? Let's see if I can copy it now. Copy to clipboard, and I will just set a work plane up here. I'll see if it'll allow me to paste. No, it doesn't seem to want to do it. Okay. I don't know if I did something wrong there, but let's see. Rotate 90 degrees. Mirror. I'll move this guy right there. So now once again, if you can't really see things very well, you can just sort of do a crossing window and filter out the stuff that you don't need to see for the moment. I get a little trickier when I have uh, generic models pointing in the other direction, going along the horizontal axis. And there's another extrusion. So I'm going to reload it back into the project, overwrite the existing. Oh, what happened? Kind of blew up. Okay, so let's see. Maybe it didn't like that very much. Let's try placing it again. One, two. Three, four. Hmm. It's saying there are identical instances in the same place. I wonder if that was just a display glitch. Let me delete that. No? That is funny. I don't know what's quite going on there. But here's the cool thing. If I once I've done that and I've established a curtain panel, I can click um, a new tool which came around in 13, which is the repeater panel, and it'll raise them along this axis. Now, the benefit of these is that, uh, you see again, it, it kind of breaks down at the triangular panels, but you can very quickly make a three-point adaptive panel that will adapt to that. And the really big benefit is, if I change this geometry, in a very weird way that's going to wreak havoc with a curtain system or a curtain panel, my adaptive panel should pretty much go with it. And you can tell this is thinking really hard. There we go. So I think that's what's the most um, interesting about adaptive panel. You have to be a little bit careful because if you get into a situation where you're doing 
warped glazing that can be expensive and in some cases with IGUs unwarrantable. But I think this has a lot of potential to do a lot of interesting things, not just for a curtain wall, but for all sorts of, um, you know, formerly what you would call a unitized system, but in this case, a highly specialized, gridded out system of specialized components.